Our guest in this segment is Jefferson County Commissioner Pasha Majdi. Pasha, good morning to you. Good morning. Now that you know more about the Stubblefield Pass than you probably <laughs> bargained for, do you have any questions for Bill? Oh, I'm taking notes over here. Be careful, <laughs> be careful, Pasha. He's embarrassed me now. I'm going to be quiet the rest of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Pasha, let's talk uh, Jefferson County here and the issues with commissioners because this is a fluid situation. Uh, are the Kraus and Jackson appeals still active? It, as far as I know, yes, they're still active. Okay. Uh, those appeals, how will they affect the commission going forward into January if, uh, if they're successful and if they're not? If they're successful, uh, my understanding is that Jackson and Kraus come back onto the commission. And if they're not, we'll proceed as we have with our appointed commissioners right now. And of those two commissioners, uh, would either of them have been up for election this time around? No, neither of them are running. Okay. So now for your status, you were appointed to replace a commissioner. Yes. Uh, there was a vacancy when former commissioner Claire Ath, who's a friend of mine, a great person, uh, she had a, a change in her family life and decided she needed to step down. And uh, that, that created a vacancy on the commission. And I had some friends on the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee um, send me a note and say, hey, Pasha, you know, it would be nice if you'd throw in an application here. We've got some uh, great candidates, but, uh, you know, with your experience having been on a town council before, you may be able to help us out. Um, and I said, sure. Uh, so I threw in an application. Uh, I, somehow I got selected. That whole process was crazy. I was. Uh, was not expecting that at all. And we, we're in a similar situation now because of the removal of uh, uh, former Commissioner Jackson and former Commissioner Krauss from office by the courts for malfeasance. Uh, th there's, uh, there's an empty spot on the ballot. And, again, um, I, I got called by friends on the, uh, on the executive committee of the Republican Party and said, look, we don't have anybody. Would you, would you step in for a couple more years? I said, okay, fine. Let's see who's applying. I put in um, an application, and wouldn't you know it, nobody else applied. So, you know, I thought we'd spend the summer picking uh, other candidates, uh, looking at resumes, seeing who's capable, and, and, you know, asking each other, okay, who's willing to take a turn? But I guess nobody else was willing to do it. So here we are. And you are you were appointed for Charlestown, but you're going to run for for election out of Harper's Ferry, correct? Right. So county elections, county commission elections are countywide. It doesn't matter where you live. You vote for the whole county commission that's on the ballot. And this year, there's four out of five on the ballot. So it's a good year to pay attention to county politics. But the representatives on the commission, the prospective commissioners, have to be residing in one of five so-called magisterial districts. I live in Harper's Ferry. There was an empty spot on the ballot for Harper's Ferry because of the removal, and that's why there was this uh, peculiar process. It's quite unusual, but uh, you know I'm happy to help out the party when when help is needed. And Jackson was Harper's Ferry, correct? That's right. Okay, so uh, you will you will run out of the Harper's Ferry district. Is there anybody else currently filed out of Harper's Ferry? There's not. It's kind of strange. Nobody else uh, wanted to run as a Republican, and we'll see who the Democrats put up. And um, maybe there's a third-party candidate, too. I haven't been monitoring that. Okay. Bill, you've, you've got some uh, experience with this county commission stuff. Yes. Uh, of the, uh, of the, say, three out of uh, four, four are running, uh, are the other three contested? Are you the only one with an uncontested seat? I don't know. Um, we'll find out. I, I, I think it's a... It might be a little bit early to say it's uncontested because the Democrats will have a process by which they appoint someone to the ballot as well. Um, and that deadline, I think, is mid-August. The whole thing is weird because it's subject to you know court rulings and whatnot. It's not your typical primary process. But to make a long story short, nobody was expecting to have a primary for these two districts because we were expecting – Jackson and Krause to finish out their terms. But when the whole debacle happened last year and they tried to shut down the government and the court stepped in and said, can't do that, that's illegal, and then they were eventually removed uh, for, for malfeasance, that created two openings where both parties are required by law 
to appoint someone onto the ballot. Now, if it had happened before the primary, then we would have had a primary, but it happened after the primary. Yeah, after the primary, there are certain circumstances, such as if someone dies on un, uh, dies unexpectedly, if there happens to be a vacancy uh, that was not anticipated. Uh, there have to be certain conditions, I believe, before the uh, uh, the the party can appoint someone. But I but I'm a little fuzzy just what those conditions are. So. Right, right. That sounds right to me. Yeah. John, yeah, <clears throat> I would change the subject a little bit. Over the weekend, um, I was made aware through social um, social media post, uh, rather angry social media post, actually, that is there some kind of of well, it's called a land grab in the social media post, but I, I presume it's it's a plan through eminent domain to clear the way for power lines to come through uh, Jefferson County, two mile wide swaths of of uh, area to allow for power lines to uh, accommodate the Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, the, the PJM um, Department of Energy power line thing. What, what it says here is that um, I wanted to warn people in the way, which would mean Jefferson County, they're very unspecific, that this this process is already in stage three planning, but the comment period was only available until June 25th, and despite many written letters asking t- to extend it, they won't. No clear communication. Why are they being so secretive? Because they know they will destroy hundreds of homes and businesses. Does this resonate with you at all? Uh, I'm, I'm actually not familiar with that. I hope that's okay. not a disappointing answer, but that's the best that I've got. Um, I know that, um, generally speaking, uh, siting for transmission lines is a highly controversial process. It involves property rights and eminent domain. It's always extremely difficult. But I haven't heard of uh, that coming up for Jefferson County. Maybe it is, uh, but it's further down the line, no pun intended. The the <laughs> point that you made about two miles wide, it's certainly not going to be two miles wide. Maybe we're talking about the length of the line being two miles. Um, I, I don't know too much about siding, but I know it can't be at that scale. That's not possible. But to your knowledge, there's not a an ongoing process to to – acquire large swaths of Jefferson County through eminent domain? No. Okay. This is the second time we've heard this. One of Someone who was a candidate, I don't remember if it was Jefferson County Board of Education or what it was, showed us a drawing of that, John. It was a line that was cutting through Jefferson County. Uh, they said it was at least one mile wide. Your uh, mention there says two miles wide. That seems like an extraordinarily wide swath of land to need to put power lines. Well, it depends on the size of the power line. I mean, we're used to regular power lines, but these apparently are to, according to this, it's it's power to um, to to provide power to these big data centers and such that are in in Loudoun County and other places, which would be that's a lot of power. A mile wide. I I, I don't know. I, Two I, miles I would bet, wide, gentlemen. Even though I've already said I'm not, I haven't been briefed on this, but I would bet we're confusing length with width here. The, the width is typically measured in yards, yes, or perhaps feet. No, the, the so person, I, the person that showed me the drawing, wasn't talking about length. They were talking about width because my reaction was the same. It was what? That's yeah. extraordinarily wide. Well, maybe I should just uh, wait until I yeah. hear more about it before weighing in. Then, no, no, I, 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 in, in all that's fairness, right. I blindsided you with that. So that's yeah, that's all right, no problem. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Posh, I want to uh, ask you a, a bit more about the election process, uh, if you could. Sure. Once again, you'll you'll be running out of the Harper's Ferry district. If you are yes. unopposed, does that mean that you automatically win and get a seat on the commission? I guess so. Um, I guess while well, there could be a writing campaign, you never know, right? Yeah. Uh, does happen every now and then. But uh, I, I would expect that the Democratic Party will put somebody up. And if not, uh, there will be a third-party candidate. And if not, there will be a um, – there's going to be some sort of opposition. I, I haven't really planned ahead for that circumstance. But uh, but typically, if you if you would not be opposed by anybody, then you would be the person who would represent Harper's Ferry on the commission, Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to go to the county's finances. We had you on a couple months ago, and uh, Steve Pearson had been on previous to your appearance as well, talking about the budgeting situation in Jefferson County, uh, money that was unaccounted for, uh, money that was uh, missing, money that was eventually found. Uh, what ultimately happened with that and the balancing of the budget and the funds in Jefferson County? I'm so glad you brought it up. I was going to bring it up myself. This is a- – 
my one of my top issues. I was the only commissioner who didn't vote on the FY24 budget, the fiscal year 24 budget, last year's budget, because I was new. So I came in with a critical eye, and um, let's just say I, I voiced that criticism uh, forcefully. Um, the county budget and the county finances were a mess when I joined. It was chaotic. We were spending money two places at once, and we were deficit spending. The reason for that is we had multiple finance directors, many of whom um, quit on the job because of the chaos of the prior regime. We have righted the ship. We've hired a county executive who's a professional and has established a positive workplace and working culture, just like she did with JCBA, the Jefferson County Development Authority. That's why we hired her, because she turned around that organization, and we asked her to turn around this organization. She's doing that. Now it's a stable workplace, and we've been able to balance the budget because we are no longer spending money two places at once. Think about it like well, a lot of kids, uh, a lot of families have kids home from school. So let's say um, you know it's August. You're getting ready to take kids back to school. Um, Dad goes out shopping and buys uh, pencils, erasers, notebooks, etc., but doesn't talk to mom about it. Mom goes out shopping and buys back to school supplies as well, and forgets to talk to dad about it. And then you get back home and you say, "Oh, we didn't we didn't plan this in advance. We spent twice." instead of keeping to our budget. That's what the county was doing. And it's because we had multiple finance directors and we couldn't hire people to stay on because of the, the chaotic regime that we had before. So what happened was we were spending multiple times the same, for, on multiple things at the same time, and we had a budget that was not reconciled. The consequence of that is, and this is the part that really, uh, really bothered me as a commissioner, we were draining our rainy day fund. This is the money that the taxpayers have put away in case of emergency, when things go bad, when there's a sharp downturn in the economy. That wasn't too long ago. We remember that these things happen. We were draining our rainy day fund even though there was no emergency. And that was just through poor planning. We had revenue that we were spending in our operating budget. And at the same time, we had marked it to transfer to the rainy day fund. Well, you can't, send the, you can't send the same dollar to two different places at the same time. So as a result, our rainy day fund was raided, and our budget was out of whack. Now, we brought in a budget director. We still don't have a finance director. We brought in a budget director to clean up this mess, and she has done – a heroic job. Her name is Bessie Nelson. She's a fantastic staffer, working overtime, working weekends to save the county from financial catastrophe. I'm so proud of the work that she's done to reconcile the budget. Now we have a balanced budget, and because we had a little bit of contingency built in, we were able to balance the budget. We have it balanced moving forward. That's something I pushed for when I joined the commission, and I'm happy to say we're back in the black. We're no longer in the red, and we'll continue that moving forward. Did we find the four point eight million dollars? Yes. Where the was the way it? that the way it was missing was that we had three different budgets. We had a county budget, we had a budget that we sent to the state, and we had the budget that we put in. Let's call it our software. And none of those three were reconciled because that's the job of the finance director didn't have a finance director. So we brought in um, someone, Bessie, a budget director, to clean up that mess, reconcile all three budgets. And there were a couple areas in which uh, there were uh, major discrepancies that have to do with uh, transfers to rainy day funds. I have asked for a full report of what happened with FY24 budget. That's going to come out in, if not our next meeting, the meeting after that, um, the, the staff came back and said, we need a little bit more time. I said, look, at this point, just get it right. If it takes an extra month, that's fine. Just get it right because the people need to know where are their taxpayer dollars going and how is the budget being spent. Did the state auditor get involved at all? This is exactly the role the state auditor should play. Yes. They did so get involved. Actually, we passed a motion as the county commission to have the state auditor uh, review our budget. 
our staff did contact the state auditor's office and work with them, and this is the result of that. Okay, so the the report that you expect in the next me, uh, next few weeks will be from the state auditor. Is that correct, or is it going to be an internal document? It'll be internal, but the state auditor's office has reviewed our budget, and that is required by law as well. Well, and the commission supported it by a vote. We're, we're two different things, at least I think there are. Uh, one is the, the budget going forward, and the second one are the reconciliation of the various funding sources that you already had, the point that John Gilscrap kind of asked you. Uh, have you been able to, you said you found the, uh, the, the missing dollars, but have you found the cause for the missing dollars, and th- isn't that something the auditors should do? Yeah, the cause was we were allocating money to two different places at the same time. So one of the reasons it wasn't flagged early is that it's perfectly legal and some counties intentionally will want to draw from their rainy day fund. We had no reason to do that. It's not illegal, but it's a very poor policy decision. I would say it's terrible budgeting to draw from your rainy day fund without some sort of emergency. But we were doing that. The, the sad and unfortunate part of it is we were doing it unwittingly. We were doing it unintentionally because we weren't keeping track of our budget. That's the reason we had uh, different numbers, and that's the reason we needed to have an audit, and uh, we've figured out a way to reconcile that, and we balanced our budget. So did it end up spending $4.8 million that you didn't intend to spend, or was it just you? it was never really spent? It was just in, in the wrong pocket of the same suit? I think the, the the suit analogy works here. It was in the wrong pocket of the same suit. We weren't keeping track of money properly. I don't think we oh, – we did not overspend by $4.8 million and we can have uh, – When we have the full report, it'll show dollar by dollar how that happened, and uh, I'll be able to explain it a little bit better. But from a 10,000-foot level, the problem was we were putting money in our operating – we were allocating revenue towards operating expenses and towards transfers to the rainy day fund at the same time. That can't happen, and when you're not keeping track of things and uh, expenses and uh, checks going out the door – that leads to problems, and we've, we've fixed that. That's quite an indictment against the county commissioners as, as a body. Because well, you're... I think, you know, as a conservative Republican, I would say that's as bad as it gets. Uh, when you're messing with taxpayer dollars uh, because you're doing sloppy work, um, that, 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 to me, is catastrophic. Well, we've pa- been able to turn that around. I think from a management perspective, you have to ask, how did they let this happen? And um, I, in my opinion, you know, I, I haven't really shied away from the issue. I think I'm the only one who's talking about it in these terms. The reason it happened is because there was such discord on the county commission and um, a lot of vitriol going back and forth that in, instead of working together to balance the budget and move the county forward, they're working against each other. And we had staff who said, well, I don't want to work in this environment. I want out. The The most dramatic example i've I've told you guys this story a couple times before bears repeating because it's so ridiculous we had a finance director who quit within one week i mean i've never heard of something like that it's just so bizarre so our staff turnover at the senior executive level is 300 percent the national average for turnover is 20 percent so we're we've got turnover at the executive level that's more than 10 times what it should be and that's because we have such a chaotic we had past tense such a chaotic working environment that has been rectified but you know i think the former commissioners were playing a role in that there you know we had situations in which um staff you know personal information about staff was being leaked to bloggers and posted online in an effort to pressure them into resignations and that type of stuff, uh, you know, professional staff, they don't want to put up with that. They can just cross the river and work in Maryland or work in Virginia for a pay raise without the headache. Pasha, on that note, we are just about out of time. I thank you for yours this morning and for the detailed explanation of what's happened in Jefferson County and uh, wish you the best of luck in your bid to return to the commission as uh, an elected official this time. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Much appreciated, Pasha. Thanks, Pasha.